Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest tonight almost needs no introduction. Uh, he is a three-time Czech Olympic figure skater. He was the European figure skating champion for the year 2008. He's won six European Grand Prix medals, including the 2010 Russia Cup. He's the only person in this country of 10 million people to have won the Czech National Championship for figure skating for 10 times. And he's only one of three or four people in the whole world who is able to perform two, not triple LUTs, but two quads back to back. Ladies and gentlemen, a real Czech champion, Tomasz Werner. How's it going? How you doing, buddy? Wow, I can't believe you're here, man. You have been a big inspiration for me. I've watched you for many years. Uh, before I get started with your interviews, I must tell you, two, two performances I saw you do. One maybe was in, I think, 2008, when you performed uh, a Michael Jackson set. Dude, that was amazing. And the costume. <laughs> I got the inspiration. <laughs> wow, you were amazing. Well, it looks great on you. It, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the great part of my sport that um, yeah, yeah. I can also have fun yeah. doing it. Yeah. And another favorite spot for me was, I think it was in 2010, SPC. It was your comeback. And I, I'll just, I don't have it memorized, but if I can just quote the commentators. They were watching you, and you did a country music performance. Uh, this was after some years of difficulties and, and troubles for you. But when you came back with this performance, I heard the TV announcers literally say, Oh my God, it's impossible. He came back. Look at this. This performance puts him back on top. And they literally said, perfect performance, flawless, he's made a comeback, nobody else could do it. I have so many questions for you, so many, but we've got time. So first question is, Tomas, and I, so many questions I'm going to have to use this tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm 45 years old. Can you tell me, I understand that you started figure skating at five years old. Uh, why did you choose figure skating? Instead of hockey, what was it? Was there a reason? Uh, it, it's quite simple. I'm, I'm sorry, I won't be so much looking to you, but it's not that I want to ignore you, but the lights are really bright, <laughs> so I'll be looking towards okay. the dawn if you wait, excuse wait, wait, me. Wait, 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 yo, uh, yo, talk. Not all right, all right. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> I probably look like a rock star now. You do, you do. <laughs> um, so the, the real reason why I started skating, it's not a secret, and uh, I told it many times because I'm actually proud of it. Yeah. I didn't start because of being pushed by my parents. I started uh, based on love from kindergarten. Wow, I, I, uh, yes, your check is great. Thank you, thank you. Well, I fell in love in kindergarten, and uh, being five, I didn't have many chances to, to be with my girlfriend and future wife. Uh, on other occasions, but yeah, yeah. in the kindergarten. And you know, you're in constant supervision of the teacher. And so she, <laughs> she's always on your back. So th th there's no room for romance yeah, yeah, or, yeah. You, you know, just, uh, I, I felt pressure. So I needed a other activity yeah. to spend time with her. And that was figure skating. So I didn't care for figure skating at all. I didn't know anything about the sport. I only knew it's happening in the ice ring. I would need yeah. some sort of equipment for my feet, and that was it. So I, uh, this is the true story about my skating. And what happened to her? She quit after three years, and then uh, she left me alone at the, at the rink, and I changed, like I switched the love yeah, yeah. to her towards the sport, uh -huh. and it never left me. Wow. What left me was my health, so that's why yeah. I'm retired, and I can sit here and talk to you and to you. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like an idiot with those glasses. <laughs> that's I'll okay, just that's put okay. Them down. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. At five years old, you were already a champion. Just nobody knew it yet. Uh, then when you were 15, you won, I think it was, 
your first award, it was second place at Czech National Championship, I think it was. And a, late, a year later, I think it was that you won your first of 10 golden medals for the Czech Championship. Did you have any idea or feeling when you were so young that one day it would lead to something like this? No, I didn't. I, I haven't got a clue. And uh, that's all thanks to my parents because they never pushed me. They were never ambitious. Yeah. It was all up to me. And uh, even when I won the first national title, yeah. I didn't dream about winning it more and more and more. Uh, I was doing simply what I wanted to do, wow. what I enjoyed. And uh, there was no ultimate goal to go and, and win the Olympic Games. It was yeah, yeah. only now, right now and right here, doing what I love. And unfortunately, I couldn't keep it all the way till the end of my career because then you have to process the thoughts of success versus failure and yeah, yeah. what the consequences are because yeah. this sport is really only rich man's sport, I which uh, my family is not. Uh, so we had rough times uh, financing the sport. So if you, if you fail, you're not only failing your coaches, yourself, but you're also failing some contracts. I understand. And without them, it's tough to find places to train. I understand. So that was all in my mind. But uh, winning the first Czech national championships wasn't about doing it again and again and again. It was just about here and now. Wow. Well, let me ask you, when you're on the rink, uh, you know, I used to be in front of the pulpit. And when I was there, I was fully alive. Like, uh, really very much like I feel tonight in front of all of you. But when you're on the ice rink, I can guess that you probably feel totally alive. What is? What do you feel when you're on that ring? What pulses through your blood? Well, it's it's it it is different from uh, people would expect. You, you can take from people the good. You can also yeah. take the 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 bad wipes, and uh, you're very vulnerable to whatever mm. emotion is going through the ice ring. But you have the chance to choose yeah. what you want to absorb that's and if, a, that's a key. if you if you learn to absorb the positive mm. thoughts and there are many people that, that wish the great for you yeah then you can actually go through the very very tiring routine yeah. not using your own power wow by using the power of others and this is that's not a amazing. cliche this is not this is not i'm not trying to make my sport look mystic it is truth and you really can use the goodwill and power of other people to wow. enhance your performance. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Uh, on a different topic, I've read that you love working with young people and you devote some time to charity work, especially charity work that deals with inspiring children and f a fight against the AIDS virus. What is it about these two topics that grabbed your heart and made you want to be involved? Well, first of all, I think... Uh, about AIDS, it's more of a taboo and people don't talk about it. And if you yeah. don't talk about it, you don't know about that there is this danger and it could be avoided by certain, uh, how should I call it, uh, certain actions. Yeah, Let's I say yeah. You, you just don't wait until it happens. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think in the 21st century there should be taboo about illness that is spread all around the world. This is true. We, we, we should be able to talk about it. We, we should be able to talk about not only in public, but also at home yeah. with parents. And uh, this is what I try to do. I, I, I don't have my own project. Mm. So I've been asked to join yeah. an already, already well-set project running and being successful. Uh, so there was a no-brainer for me. Mm. I, I automatically agreed and said, yes, I, I want to be part of it. Mm. And if I can contribute, and, and maybe, maybe I'm foolish now, but if I can maybe avoid somebody getting sick or hurt or die eventually, yeah. then this is amazing chance giving me from the people from Art for Life. Yeah. So I, I took the chance, that was a no-brainer for me. And about the children, well, it's not only a cliche that children are really our future. So I think we should take care of them. And and uh, I remember my child, my own childhood, and it, it was great. And I and I wish for every child to to go through the same. Mm. I think it will set them good for life. It will give them the the balance, uh, the, the the good place within their soul where mm -hmm. they can always come back and feel great. Yeah, those memories are irreplaceable, and they can't be <laughs> can't be produced later on. You, you need to build them while you're a child. And uh, some of the adults, unfortunately, in sports, do not understand how fragile the yeah, soul of a child true. is. So I, I 
try to be more and more active whenever I can to, to be there, uh, inspire, support, yes. and, uh, and try to build uh, the health, the healthy um, level of self-confidence, yeah. which I think in our country, we, we don't have that much. We, we simply suffer from lack of self-confidence. You know, I've been teaching here for 13 years and teaching children all the way from Materska Skola to gymnasium. I can say exactly the same thing. I have so many young teenagers and children that they've never been told that they can be somebody. And they've never been told that they already are somebody and that they can do something like you did. And somebody like yourself gives them hope to try. What about this? I also read that you want to coach in the future possibly new skaters. So the question is, when you see a young skater, what is it that you see in this person that says, this person has potential? What is it? Well, basically everybody has potential. I mean, it's uh, only you have to measure what is the potential good for. Um, there, are, <laughs> there, are, there are athlete skaters uh, that have a potential to be Olympian, yeah. but I, I don't teach sport as only the high competitive elite sport mm -hmm. because I don't think that is the healthiest environment. Um, I, I teach sport as a, as a way of, it's more of a uh, philosophy than, than about only doing exercises. Mm. So there is potential in every single little skater wow. I, I cross. Well, as I'm hearing you saying this, I get the, the word coming through, through my mind, role model. And I understand that you take the position of being as a public figure and an Olympia athlete of being a role model very seriously. But then again, there you, we can all think of many other musicians, performers, artists, athletes, who we always read about the scandals and the blesk and yada yada. And I wonder where, where is this role model attitude? Where did you get it from? Because it's not so common. I would have to introduce my parents. You would, you, wow. you would have to meet my dad and my mom. That is uh, amazing. So your mom and your dad? It's all coming from them. Wow. And, uh, and they had only 12 years to, to actually give me um, all the equipment for life because uh, when I was 12, I moved out of uh, their home and, mm -hmm. and, and been traveling ever since. And just very recently, I, I settled in Prague. So I, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm also Prajak. <laughs> yes, <now>. well, <laughs> well, I got, I've got a lot of questions. If you don't mind, it's okay. Let's Another question for, for you. Uh, you know, your life has been lived in the public arena for a long time. Every time you, every time you fall, you touch the ice. Every time you make that fabulous quadruple, back to back, and the whole world holds their breath. I mean, the world watches your mistakes, they watches your failures, and they watch your successes. When you go through a period of time like you went through that was difficult for you. How do you find the courage and the strength and inspiration to get back up and try again and refocus? Where do you, where do you dig that out from? I, I wish I knew it before, but I just very recently found that actually the, 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 the difficult parts of your life are defining who you are. And wow. uh, this is when you actually can see what is in you. If, if everything goes well, you, mm -hmm. have, you have tons of friends and Usually they do stuff for you. The, you're on the on a great wipe and, and you're yeah. you're flying and there's there's no troubles around you. Literally no troubles. And this is a quite a nice and easy life. But you have to be ready for the down part because we're swinging always up and down. Mm. It just mm. goes in in sports even more so. Wow. And uh, you. Now I know, I didn't know before, but now I know that you should be grateful for the lows because it really teaches you who you are and you can wow. take and, and learn and, and then just slingshot yourself back in the skies. And, but you have to be aware that there is coming some down part again. To but be you'll be to ready. Deal with it. Yeah. Wow. You, you, you'll be ready for it. You actually you, you see a trouble and you can laugh at it and then say, hey, <laughs> I've been through this already before. What's the big deal? I'm going to suffer for, all right, I suffered for two years. Wow. And, yeah. and what? Now it made me happier than ever. Would mm -hmm. I? And the question is, would I be happier now with two Olympic medals around my neck, not knowing how to deal with the difficult part? That's a good point. Uh, yes, I would make much more money in my sport doing shows. That could make me happier for a moment. But no, in my life, my life would be empty. Mm. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't know myself. So now I, I learned through 
the the lows more than from the highs. Well, let me ask you this. Um, and they've been a lot lower. I heard actually. you mention the word gratitude. I think it was uh, the famous American comedian Steve Hardy. He is a he is an African American comedian in the United States, and he made the comment that gratitude is one of the keys to making your dreams come true faster. If you can appreciate even the bad times, it helps you go through it. And it seems like that's what you're saying, the gratitude even in the bad times. I, I think that's, it's only the, 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 the matter of, of the point of your, your view. Like the opinion could be voiced mm. through many people, but it comes down to what you feel and how you accept w mm. what it is. And uh, if the gratitude uh, it was explained this way. I can agree with that. I have. I didn't hear that ex explanation, yeah. but I would go with it. What about this? Uh, let's talk about this quote that you ha read one time from an interview. Now you must forgive me because I use a lot of Google Przekladacz. No, okay. And so maybe I got the your interview a little bit wrong. But if I'm correct, I read that you may said this, and I quote: "I'm the happiest right now." I'm happy and I do everything to keep it that way. It's more about inner conditions than outer conditions. What do you mean by that? It's, it's that I taught, I'm, I've been taught from life. It, it really only comes down to what you feel and how you um, percept what's going around you. you. You are the one who define what your life is and what the surrounding no. is like. It's all your life, it's projection and you absorb yeah. it. So if you're happy, everything just lights up and wow. you live in the in the happier place. Yeah. And uh, constantly complaining about something will never move you forward. It will just, just bring more miserable people into wow. your circle and you will settle with them just brag about how difficult the life is and they they will agree with you yeah, because yeah. they'll be as miserable as you that's true but you're responsible you are responsible for bringing them into your life with the negative wipe you just call them say i'm so miserable who who is also miserable like, okay like, I, i'm miserable yeah, yeah, all right so uh, you know, it's so everything, everything is against me no no so, no. so this, this, is, this is one way how to treat y yeah. your misery. And the other way is to say, oh my God, I, I think I'm not the only one in this, in this world yeah. which is experiencing some mm. difficult time. Let's, uh, let's move on and, and go to have some, some good time with a bunch of friends. They are on the, on the yeah. high and they will swing you with yeah. them. They, they'll just they will convince you that life is not so bad and it isn't. I'll tell you what, one person in my life that I met maybe a year or two ago that really helped me a lot, when she and I were both going through similar circumstances, was Tanya Graves. I think some of you were here last time. And we sat down for our first, for our first coffee together for like three hours. And it, it was the first time that each of us had a chance, A, to be real, and B, to talk about the positive. And the results were it helped her out a lot through things she was going through. And it helped to create the first show, and now this show that you see tonight. Oh, another question for you, uh, and tell me what do you think about this? I read that during your, some of your difficult times, when you felt like that your performances were not what they wanted, you wanted them to be, uh, that you needed to regain your self-confidence. So a friend of yours, Daniel Londa, called you when you're in Vancouver and said, can we get together and talk? And after some time, you did, and he actually coached you and helped you. And I read that you said that not only did it help you uh, athletically, but it also helped you as a person. Can, can you tell us what did he teach you, and is it okay? It had, it had much bigger effect on my life, on my everyday life, than wow. it had on my sport. And I'm really happy for that. It was difficult to be in touch with uh, Daniel because he's busy and you, you know uh, how busy he is. He's an artist, he's a yeah. rally driver. He, he's involved in many activities. And plus I was overseas for three years. So the connection wow. was difficult. Almost impossible. Yeah. Almost impossible. But for the last year, when I, when I returned for the last Olympic year, I relocated myself back to Europe. 
I uh, was back to Obersdorf, Germany, where I used to train for many, many years before, and the connection was much better. And Daniel was willing to go to Germany just to see me for a couple That's hours and, and, and come back. Uh, I'm not making a commercial for him, and uh, everybody has opinion of Daniel. He has his past, but I'm not going to defend him because I, I know him as a person, yeah. not as he is presented in media. And he touched your life. And he changed my life. Wow. He changed my life and he never asked anything else in return but my happiness. And wow. then you know you're working with the good people because they want to give you the wings back and they mm -hmm. do not expect you knocking on the door asking for, for another direction. They are willing to push you all the way until you can fly yeah. and just release you. So nothing in return but my happiness. And, and wow. th this deal is working until today. So uh, we, we are we're great friends. We're still working together. And uh, I, I really have to say he helped me more in my private life than wow. on the ice. You know, I have two people here tonight that done this, have done the same thing for me. One is Tomasz Benda, my partner. You know, without him for the last, wow, last nine fabulous years, he helped me through bad times and good times. And another one of those is a friend of mine sitting on the front row, Mr. Petr Hayek. Yeah, he's been a friend of mine for the last four or five years, and through my bad worst times, he, like Tomas, has seen me at my worst, he's seen me at my best, but both of them have believed in me, and both of them, even when a, people told me, Don, there's no way to make a show like this, both of them saw something in me, and they said, do it, and all it took was having somebody to believe in me, and that's really a gift in life. It really is. Well, it if you if you lose the self confidence, if you lose the trust in your abilities, it, it's really good to yeah. have somebody next to you who will push you and say, "Can you look at yourself as I look at you?" And wow. then when you try it, you actually find out that everybody is special. It's yeah. not, it's they're not totally true. Few unique people in the world. There are, there's exactly. six and a half billion unique people. We just don't know about all of them. Wow. I heard Will Smith once say that, well, actually, I'll read it. It's, I've only got one more page, okay? All right, all right. <laughs> it's okay? Well, I've got you here for one, so I'll make sure we get our money's worth. The actor Will Smith, do you know him? Very well, and, okay. I, and I admire him a lot. Yeah, he's, he's one of my big heroes. Uh, I'll read a quote that he said, and tell me what you think about it. Will Smith says, and I quote, I want to represent an idea. I want my life to represent possibilities. I want my life to represent the idea that you really can make what you want from your life. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is that you have to believe it. You have to believe you already are somebody. It's actually quite simple. You already are great. Uh, what does the name Tomas Verna represent? And what do you want your life to represent? Because you have a long life ahead of you. Wow, well, I'm, not, I'm not prepared to do such a statement as Will. I mean, I, I <laughs> wish I'd be that ready. Well, we don't want Will, we but want Tomas. What, what do you want your life to represent? Well, I would, I would love that my life represents uh, living living the day and uh living all the opportunities you you have i mean you mm. you do not leave them on the side if there's an opportunity yeah. you'd like to do something you just grab it mm. you, you do not look right or left uh ask for opinions if it's good for you it's good just wow. go for it and try it uh and i would go with uh i think it was mr ford who said Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Yeah. Who said, whether you believe it, whether you believe you can do something or not, you are probably right. Wow. And that's it is something. It is that's the very truth. true. Wow. If you really believe it, you can do it. And uh, who would expect Will Smith to be an icon and, exactly. and a serious actor who started with Fresh Prince from Bel Air? Yeah. And look at him now. But everybody remembers the yeah. show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, you just said something. Let me bring it back to skating for a moment, okay? 
I've seen you do triple lutzes. I've seen you land them perfectly, and the audience catches their breath, especially the Japanese crowds. They go crazy. But I've seen you do those quads two in a row, and I understand that when you jump, you jump approximately 40 centimeters off of the ice, and you're in the air for less than a second when you're doing those quads. Bef the moments before you do those, and I can see you get skating backwards, and we can feel the feeling, oh my God, he's going to do it again. How do you psych yourself up to get the energy to do that? Because it must be so incredibly difficult. <laughs> I mean, the, the first time I've done it, actually, it, it was... Um my rebellious idea. I, I, yeah. I didn't want to listen to my coaches and they told me, go for one quad and then lay the routine down. It's all good, you'll be fine. And then I, and I went on the ice and I felt great, even though I was sick, but I felt great that that moment, which counts, wow. it's the moment. Living and in the moment. Li living in the moment. And wow. I landed the first, first jump, let's yeah, call yeah. it the quadruple, triple combination and I'm skating around and I, everybody thinks the, the commentators, the, the judges, yeah, yeah. the coaches, they think I'm going for it, not a triple, triple jump, easy jump. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just saying deep here inside this little, little boy is wow. screaming like, screw that. Let's go for go another for quad. It, baby. Let's do it. Let, let's do something, uh, something special. And uh, so I listened to the little boy, which is a great voice because wow. he's never wrong. I mean, if, if, if you listen wow. to him, he's never wrong. And he told me to do it. So I just listened and go wow. with it. And uh, bam, there it was. That's uh, amazing. His history was made. And, and the commentators <laughs> were going crazy. The audience was st stunned. I, I was shocked. Yeah, I, I think my coaches couldn't believe it because I, I, I never trained for it. It was just yeah, yeah. Uh, out of a blue sky and, and it just happened. Well, let me ask you one more question on that topic. Uh, Denzel Washington, the famous actor, also said... And I quote, he said, you attract what you fear. So when you're performing, if you doubt yourself and you see something as impossible or, or difficult, does it become more difficult to do it? And is the opposite true? If you visualize in your mind yourself doing it, does it become easier? I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't, didn't hear the, the last, uh, the, the second the half part? of your questions, but I, I was focused on the first part, which was more important. Okay. And uh, I, I read a book recently, it's called The Monk Who Sold His Own Ferrari. I've got it at home. And uh, this, uh, this very um, educated and spiritual world, world guy who comes back to America to teach us the, the, the way of, of, of living, actually, yeah, yeah. the philosophy, explains that we do not possess the luxury to have bad thoughts. And we, we actually do not notice how many thoughts we have through going through our mind, at, not a day, but in a second. Yes, true. Uh, the, 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 there are many things rushing through your head. And if you keep controlling them, and you only choose the positive ones, you, you, you will see a huge impact in your life. And you, you will just you'll be a different person, not a personality, but you'll be a different person, much happier, much more effective. Wow. But unfortunately, there are fears, and these are the negative thoughts. It's normal. And, and we just let them live there. No. We, we, we should just either ignore them or force them out. Just don't let them attack our self-confidence, and this is what happens in sport mm. the most. When, when you do a clean routine, when you do a great job, uh, I would talk about figure skating now, you already see yourself doing the perfect routine like Before it's, it's you do right it. here so you don't have a fear because you know you're gonna do it it's wow in your mind is it's already quite done. simple and and you actually think like why would people clap for this it's so easy it is wow. not but I understand. in your mind yeah you have this little guy in your mind skating the same routine and never doing mistakes and if you follow him you won't do the mistakes wow. but if you come on uh it's it's not only a figure skating, it's, uh, it's a graduation. You're coming for a graduation and the, there it is, the, uh, the sec with numbers and you're saying like, please not 23, <laughs> please not 23. <laughs> Bam, yeah. she's right there. How is that possible? It's, the universe works this way. It's just, uh, the, the energy, the negative energy of you projecting that you don't want it, you don't want it, you don't want it. The universe doesn't understand the I word understand no. He's a, I want it. He, he understands. Okay, yeah, yeah. I give it to him. I just give it to him, to that guy. Okay, 23. Wow. You have it. English literature. Well, can I share something with you? 
uh, this is a very going along. Maybe it's taking a little bit farther, but many of you know my life, and you've seen my story on YouTube on Don Hall Gosha TV, a film a documentary that was made about me by the Czech documentarist. Is that correct, documentarist? Documentarista. Documentarista. No, uh, Pan Igor Haun. No, and he filmed. He I didn't know he was there, but he was there, and he filmed the story of my life. And uh, you know, years ago, I stood before the uh, for, oh gosh, almost 15 years on television, on radio, uh, all over the United States, and uh, as a pastor. And when I decided to stop that, I thought my world had fallen apart. And I went through a long period of time of trying to find myself again, very much like the times you go through uh, when you have your ups and downs and your body's hurting like hell and you're, well, what do I do next? And uh, I came across actually this book, The Secret. And I'm not like trying to sell this book. I'm giving it away for free tonight. But really, it changed my life. And one thing it talked about was making something called a dream board. And what that is, it's something totally crazy. You cut out photographs of things that you want to achieve, you want to be, you want to have, and put them there on that board. And then you see in your mind as yourself already having those things, already being that person, already being with that person maybe, and uh, then you just let it go because it's not your job to make it happen. And I looked back in my computer. Tomas and I were talking about it the other night before the show. On December the 11th, 2013, I made, and this is no joke, I can bring my computer and you can see the date. I made a storyboard that was about a television show I wanted to do about positive thinking. I had the set, literally, the set that I wanted, the th themes I wanted, the fact that I wanted to be on not just one television camera, like some amateur event, but as you can see, many. And I had a team of sound engineers, a film crew, a fabulous staff that were making it happen. I detailed on each page in my PowerPoint presentation, this is what I want my life to be. At on October the 9th, 2014, we had the first premiere of the Don Hall Show. And I totally forgot about that. And this past week, when I was working on this set, because this new set you see tonight, I redesigned it. It was something that was in my imagination. And uh, when I looked back through the computer, by accident, I opened up this PowerPoint file that I forgot about. And I realized, oh my goodness, really? A year ago, here was the dream board, and here is the dream. It's quick, isn't it? it? It's amazing. It doesn't always work that way, but I tell you what, when it does, honey, it's good. Let me ask you just a couple last questions, and I'll let you go. We have something else to do first, too. Question, I understand uh, that your favorite actors are Mel Gibson and Al Pacino. What is it about them that make them your favorite? Well, um, I have a few more to, to mention, but... Um, Go ahead. For instance, my, my, my very, very favorite movie is The Bucket List with Morgan Freeman and Jack yeah, Nicholson. Yeah, I love that. I, uh, but <laughs> I don't believe that Jack Nicholson is actually a good actor. I think he's just himself. I yeah. mean, he is And Morgan is. Freeman is Morgan and, Freeman. And th those guys are perfect for those yeah. roles, and I admire them so much. Well, Mel Gibson, I, I love that guy from... Uh, from Die Hard for yeah. so many years, and I've seen many many other movies with him and some interviews, and I just love his attitude towards life, and I, I love his activities, and that he was not afraid of anything, trying new projects, and that was that was inspiring, even though he never stood mm. on the ice and he had nothing to do with figure wow. skating, but he was just this inspiring character, and then. Um, Something happened in his life. I don't know why he went down, but this is up to him, and this is his journey. Maybe he had too much of the great slingshot up, and then yeah. he, he he might swing back again. We, I we think you we, will. Ne we never know. Well, one last question for you. Can you tell us about your new show? I believe it's coming out, is it October? Can you tell us something about it? Is, is it okay? That, 
that is absolutely okay. Um, there are actually many shows coming up. I'm I'm working uh, I'm working in Russia with Evgeny Plushenko, yeah. which is I believe no the, way. The, the greatest the skater the the greatest skater of all time. Excuse times. me, but he's way, he, he's on your level. But wow, he's like no, no, he's way beyond my level. I, I'm, you're I, like Michael Jackson, but he's like Elvis, no? Well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish that Two would be kings. true. So yeah, <laughs> well, we actually have a, a show named Kings on Ice as well, really? uh, which represents four kings, which is Plushenko, Lambiel, Joubert, yeah. and Werner. And uh, we just saw, sold out a great crowd in in Warsaw, twenty two thousand people coming to, to see figure skating, which was the record wow. for Europe. And can you imagine at one time, this you were a kid, a Mateuszka Szkola, five years old, who started skating because you loved a girl. And you never stopped because then you love the sport and then you learn to love yourself. Be because the kids are actually, they are wise. I, I mean, and it's foolish to think that yeah. they, they, they are not troubled and, or their trouble are not as important as our no, trouble with that's work. True. Their trouble are as important as our life choices. And, but they are wise. So I was they wise are. and I was doing one thing at the time. Wow. And I never, I never, uh, made myself busy with thinking about medals and stuff. It was love, and then some weird sport on the ice, then the <laughs> love disappeared, and then there was the ice sport, wow. and, and then it continues it's like a snowball. It goes around and around, and, and here I am sitting with you in, in your dream show. And, wow. and that the, I think the problem with, with Czech people, especially with Czech people, they do not believe that it's quite simple to, to be positive. At, as simple as drawing a board and and, yeah. s and putting it on your on your yeah. door just to see it every day yeah. and there will be three goals what you want to be or what you want to do this year you will do it, it totally and if, if you want if you want to try out how powerful your positive strength is i'm sure you, you you're driving around sometimes that you go shopping or you go some favorite place hey, hey you, i know you, i know what you, you're talking about you i do this with the seat on the bus yeah every morning <laughs> No, but you can't find a parking lot because yeah. it's so crowded. So yeah. give the universe a little bit of heads up. Give yeah. it like, let's say, 30 minutes and really wish for parking lot in and the specify spot. Specify which one. Really <laughs> you might wish get the for back it. one. But don't fool yourself. Don't, yeah. don't be negative and say, I'll, I'll just try how it works. No, wish for it. Uh, be sure it's going to yeah. happen. And I, sh I assure you, it's going to happen. Well, so. Tomas, we have two more things to do before you go. I'm sorry to keep you so long, but again, we have another copy with Tomas's signature in it. Signature in it. Can you choose somebody first of all to give it to? So that's the number one. Yes, I can okay. do it. Should okay. Okay. One, have, one step at a time. Yeah, one step right. at a time. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see anything like this, so I'm just gonna go and, <laughs> and look around, 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 around. And you know, I would go with the uh, with with the youngster here. Okay. So. Discover the secret. Wow. Well, next up tonight, Tomorrow, uh, we have two more things for it.